Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today we're going to be talking about the Disney streaming service. So we've, of course, heard a lot of things about the service. Now it seems that we have a tentative name for the service and a little bit more information about the price and about the possible content that will be on it. So this is a Fortune uh, article right here. Disney has sent it a name for its new streaming service. So as it says here, Disney is gearing up to launch a streaming service next year to compete with the likes of Netflix, and we finally know its name tentatively at least. In a report on Friday, Variety noted that Disney CEO Bob Iger refers to the upcoming platform as Disney Play. It's one of a suit of planned direct-to-consumer services, which Iger says is the biggest priority of the company in 2019. So what it sounds like to me is that there's going to be multiple services being uh, being involved, being uh, discussed, being used by Disney, and one of them is going to be this Disney Play concept, which I'm assuming is going to be where movies and television essentially live within the platform. Now, as I've said before, before in previous videos and on my own live streams when asked this question, do I plan on buying the service? I've said, well, it depends. It depends on how much content is provided. I care more in my mind how much original content or rather how much uh, hardcore old school original content is available on this channel more than anything else. For example, how much classic stuff is going to be on there, like for the examples of Boy Meets World. Is the entire series of Boy Meets World going to be featured on this channel? That is something that I would like to know. Um, any other old school Disney shows that I grew up with that I think that I might actually either want to rewatch, want to revisit, or possibly, you know, when I start having kids, want to revisit at some point with them. How much of that is going to be offered? Are they going to are they going to essentially open up the entire library of Disney shows and movies to this service? If that is the case, if that is what they plan on doing to provide a lot of or a plethora uh, for anyone who is my fan of uh, Three Amigos, um, if they are offering a plethora of options here, then I'm all on board. Then I am absolutely on board, and I will most likely be subscribing to this service. But if instead they focus more on new original content and newer films. I don't quite think it's going to be enough for me to want to get a new subscription service. So some people might say, yeah, but you're saying no to new Disney films or to first access to new Disney films like Captain Marvel and the new Star Wars films. But of course, you already, already know my opinions on what I think those films are actually going to end up doing. But no, but even in the future, you know, you look to the new Avengers film coming out next year, for example, you know, first access to those things. And I think to myself, well, if I really like the movie in theaters, I'm probably going to end up buying it because as much as I do like streaming services and not having to buy literally every movie on the planet, if there's a movie that I really do want to watch, if there's a movie that I do really want to see, I'm either going to buy it or I'm going to rent it or I'm actually going to see it in theaters. So the real question is how much content are they going to provide? Even if the price is dirt cheap, again, they're talking about being less expensive than what Netflix is right now. But if that is the case and they're offering significantly less content and most of the content is their newer stuff, you can count me out on that because it's just not quite enough to, to hold me to it. But let's actually see what's going on. Disney in the midst of a closing a deal for 21st century, 21st century Fox, subject to approval by international regulators, and it's hoping its cash of exclusive intellectual property will give Netflix a run for its money. Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar titles will undoubtedly be a key for Disney's hopes to lure away fans from streaming competition. Again, if they promise to provide the entire classic Disney movie lineup, the entire Pixar lineup, and also all Star Wars and Marvel. Now, obviously, obviously we know they can't have all Star Wars films until 2024 when their contract with Time Warner comes up because Time Time Warner actually owns uh, streaming rights to the content because, you know, of course, Kathleen Kennedy and all the people running Lucasfilm made that stupid deal back in, like, what, 2016? But even then... Until 2024, they don't have access to all of the new, uh, all of the Star Wars films. In fact, the first film that they can actually put onto their streaming service, from what I have been told, is going to be Episode Nine. Now, I don't know why they wouldn't be able to put Solo on. I don't know if that, if the deal just extended to those films or not. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that that is not looking good if you're going to try and bring Star Wars fans to your service. Marvel, if they again promise to provide all 20 Marvel films and then plus first access to the newest Marvel films, that might just be enough to bring a lot of people in. Again, for me, I'm a little skeptical because of all the Marvel films that I actually would want to see again, I already own them. So again, depending on the price, depending on how much they're actually going to offer is really going to determine whether I or anyone else for that matter is actually going to dive into the service. But again, the Pixar library to me and the Disney classic film library is where they are going to be able to make the most um, 
is actually the, to make the strongest case for their service. Because if they are able to promise and say, we are going to provide to you every single Disney animated film that's ever been released, every single Disney live action film that's ever been released, all these other things, that is when they could absolutely make a case. That is when they absolutely could make a case to me and to a lot of other people to actually want to buy their service. But again, still remains to be seen about what they will actually be offering. There is a price for this exclusivity. Disney will have to do with roughly $300 million in annual revenue to, uh, it makes from Netflix for the rights for its programs. But Disney is banking on next year's film slate to draw consumers to its service, with anticipated titles like Captain Marvel, Dumbo, Toy Story 4, a live-action Lion King remake, Frozen 2, and a new Star Wars movie. So again, if you're just going to focus on the new content, I don't think that's going to be enough to bring people in. Again, Focus on what has made you popular. Focus on what has actually brought you money, what has actually brought you uh, the um, the fame that you have right now, the, the popularity that you have right now. Even though, obviously, when it comes to Star Wars, you are definitely losing some of that popularity. But you can still, at the end of the day, be able to provide something to some extent if you're able to, again, bank on that old school library, not just on the new stuff. But Disney won't have nearly as much original content on Netflix, which offers upwards of 700 originally produced titles. That factor is acknowledged in Disney Play's lower price, which will cost less than Netflix's $8 to $14 a month streaming fee, Iger said. So Iger says it will cost a little bit less. He says a little bit more. We have the luxury of programming this product with programs from those brands or derived from those brands, which obviously creates a demand and gives us the ability to, to not necessarily be in the volume game, but to be in the quality game, Iger said in the earnings call earlier this month. So... Again, if you're focused more on quality than on quantity, then that gets me a little bit concerned because if you look to the vast library of Disney Pixar films, if you look to the vast library of Marvel films, if you look to the vast library of Disney TV shows alone, there is a huge library to be had there. So the fact that they're trying to say we're focusing more on quality has me a little bit concerned because it tells me or makes me think that they're going to be focusing more on their new content, their new Star Wars show, their newer movies being added to the service rather than trying to highlight some of the classic stuff. And as I said before, I will actually be more interested in buying this service if they offer that stuff. Article ends with, there is no official release date for Disney Play, but Iger has said the platform is slated, slated to launch in the fourth quarter of 2019, which means it'll be right in time for Disney Star Wars <laughs> Episode Nine, which, again, makes that movie mean a hell of a lot. If that is going to be the movie that's going to be coming out very soon or very soon after you announce this service, you want to make it good. You want to make it so that people are actually going to want to buy your service, which is why Episode Nine, even more so, needs to kick the ball. You know, needs just needs to slam the ball out of the park. But as we have seen, as we have seen already with the, the fact that they have to really pick themselves up from essentially from, from the dirt, essentially, after Episode 8, who knows if they're going to be able to do so. But as I said, are, I – and again, this is where I get stuck every single time. I am I would be interested in this service because again I I love Disney movies. Sorry, I I think Marvel's been great. Even when Disney took over, I think Marvel has still done very well. I think Kevin Feige's done a very good job with Marvel. I think that when you look to the vast library of Disney movies, not just the animated films, but also the live action films, the original live action films, not these animated to live action adaptations where there's only been like maybe one or two that are actually worth talking about, while the others like Beauty and the Beast, for example, have been under <laughs> to complete and utter garbage. But at least then you have. Something to look forward to if I if you can promise saying we're going to provide you all of the movies. You know how they always like to release their films and try and say, oh, it's coming out of the vault and it's going to be away for a long time. You know how, remember how like that's how they used to sell it? Well, how about instead you say instead of taking something out of the vault and putting it back in, say we're going to give you the entire damn vault. We're going to give you every single Disney film ever made, every single Disney series ever made. Guess what? That would have someone like me and a lot of people like me a hell of a lot more interested. Now, there might be some people that might want to still boycott you because of everything with Disney going on right now with Star Wars. And again, I support that anyone who wants to boycott you in that way because honestly, I think that the way that y'all are handling Star Wars and the way that y'all have just been, you know, allowing these people just to basically just destroy and attack the fans without actually coming up to support them is kind of just silly and just counterintuitive in my mind. But. At the end of the day, I think that you would be able to bring a lot of people to your service if, again, you're able to promise those things. But anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts on this? Do you think Disney Play works? I think that's actually a pretty good name. I think that that works for what they're going to be trying to do. But are you interested?
interested, would you be willing to pay? Let it says less than Netflix, uh, eight to fourteen dollars a month, which tells me that there probably is going to be a price range. Maybe we could see something between five and ten dollars a month. Could possibly be that. Would you be willing to spend that much if they were going to offer you? old and classic content, or would that be enough, that $5 to $10 a month be enough for you just to get the new stuff, just to get the newer content? Please let me know in, your, in the contents below. I mean, <laughs> please let me know in the comments below. Ooh, it's been a long day. And I would greatly appreciate that feedback, guys. Also, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. It helps me out so much. Y'all are all amazing. Love you guys so much. Remember, no live stream tonight because I'm going to see, for the first time in my life, um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I'm going to see it in IMAX, and I'm very, very pumped, very excited. Cannot wait to see that. But anyway, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Y'all are amazing. Have a great day, and as always, God bless.